I'm Saladin Ambar. Welcome to this moment in democracy. What does it take to keep the republic? How do we cultivate civic engagement among younger generations? Will Gen Z turn out for the midterm elections and how will they impact the results? This week, we explore these topics with Dr. Elizabeth C. Maddow, Director of Eagleton Center for Youth Political Participation and CYPP Program Manager, Jessica Ronan. Let's get started. Elizabeth, could you please tell us a little bit about your book, how it came about, what led you to the discussion of civic engagement, particularly among the youth? The book, um, Keeping the Republic, for those of you who don't know maybe what that's based on, it's based on a saying supposedly (laughs) uttered by Benjamin Franklin, uh, where apparently he was asked when emerging from the Constitutional Convention, you know, so what what did you create, a monarchy or a republic? Um, To which he responded, a republic if you can keep it. Um, Now, in the course of researching my book, I've learned that maybe absolute folklore. It may not, he may not really have said that, but it's a really useful bit of folklore or mythology for us in that it really underscores two things. First, that democracy is fragile. It's not guaranteed. And that also it's on us. It's dependent upon us to keep it. So that's really been the work that I've done at the Eagleton Institute of Politics with the Center for Youth Political Participation you know, we really base all of the work we do, the research, the teaching, the scholarship on the idea that democracy is not genetic. We don't, we're not born knowing what it means to be a democratic citizen, lowercase d, democratic citizen. And in many ways, this book really stems from that, helps us understand, well, what does it take to keep the republic? And more importantly, what does it take uh, from us to keep the republic? You know, certainly, as we'll probably talk about, we spend a lot of time on the Rutgers campus and even beyond the Rutgers campus, supporting, encouraging students to vote. But keeping the republic is more than voting. It's critically important, but it also takes having a shared set of democratic values and norms. It takes being willing to carry those those norms and values into our conversations, um, into our behavior. So that's really where the book started. And that's really the the tone of of keeping the Republic. It's really uh, totally topical to where we are now. And I'm wondering to what extent did you have to resist thinking about or writing about current events, or did you allow yourself uh, to tap into some of what's been happening with respect to threats to democracy in the United States and and even around the world. What was that like for you writing this book at this moment? So this book was, uh, Rutgers University Press reached out to me um, a few years ago, uh, prior to 2020. Um, And even then I thought, this is an important book. This is a meaningful book. But then so much has happened since then, as we all know. Um, making it, in my mind, even more important and making me feel a real sense of importance in in crafting this book. So I would say, like all the work we do at Eagleton Dean, you know, it's a mixture of the of the scholarship, the theory and the practical. I certainly want to bring to life um, the ideas, the scholarship that's shared that I'm trying to translate in this book to to contemporary American democracy. I think it really reflects a challenge. I know speaking for myself, I often face in the classroom is that we are nonpartisan. I I want to teach as a nonpartisan uh, faculty member, right? but I also am (laughs) pro-democracy, pro lowercase d democracy. So I think it, it really is incumbent upon me as an educator, as an as a scholar, to um, to call out uh, things when they are anti-democratic. Doesn't matter from which party it's coming. I'm curious also, um, as you say that, uh, the extent to which you anticipate this having an impact on college curriculums. I mean, we often hear uh, narratives about people not taking civics any longer at the high school level, but what are your intentions with respect to or hopes uh, with respect to what this book might mean for college curriculums? Well, in addition to the work um, that I'm involved in at the Eagleton Institute of Politics and Rutgers, um, I've been involved with some scholarship, some publications from the American Political Science Association, um, really advancing this call. First of all, really encouraging political science uh, as a discipline to embrace its role. Uh, to teach civic engagement and encourage and support uh, democratic citizenship. 
And, you know, we've done that in the publication of a few books, teaching citizens, uh, teaching active citizenship, teaching citizen civic engagement across the disciplines. And, and again, it really emanates from this notion that We have a role in higher education, not just political scientists, all disciplines, campus culture as a whole to foster civic engagement. So I'm very hopeful that uh, the book Keeping Keeping the Republic could be useful to undergraduates as they're just sort of wading in to understanding the literature when it comes to civic engagement and applying it to contemporary politics. I think it it could be relevant to, to high school students and really just citizens at large that are maybe forgotten what it means to be a democratic citizen, never learned what it means to be a democratic citizen. So I'm hoping it will have some broad accessibility. Now, when can we expect this book to be on shelves? When can we uh, hope to purchase it? I am feverishly finalizing the manuscript as we speak and delivering it to Rutgers University Press. And I'm hopeful that hopefully maybe by next summer or next fall, um, hopefully it'll be a smooth process and it will be out fairly soon. Well, terrific. I've uh, had the good fortune of having an early look at it, and it is terrific. It is beautifully written, and I think a powerful statement about uh, where we need to be as a country and as a republic. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting my hard copy autographed by you. So looking (laughs) forward to that. Absolutely. Uh, I do want to get back to uh, what you alluded to earlier, and that's the kind of work you're doing at Eagleton, at the Institute of Politics. Can you share a little bit about what Are You Voting is, what uh, what is happening there uh, with that part of the Center for Youth Political Participation? Are You Voting is an initiative that was um, really created by the president's office years ago, the president of Rutgers University, and meant to be a nonpartisan, accurate, comprehensive voting resource for Rutgers students, Rutgers faculty, administration. Um, and, you know, when we started this work probably 15 years ago, there were very few colleges and universities doing this sort of work, really embracing its role in promoting, disseminating information to, to students. And, you know, we started with, it's kind of scary to think about what it looked like 15 years ago, but a one-stop shop website that was very unique, specific to Rutgers students. Um, you know, as you can imagine, Rutgers campus is large. It uh, can be confusing, especially if you're a first year student trying to get yourself situated and acclimated. So really providing a step-by-step guide for Rutgers students and for faculty and administrators who wanted to support Rutgers students as they were, you know, trying to get registered and trying to vote. So we have grown steadily over the years, really excited to see us featured on learning management systems, really excited, for example, that when the chancellor or the president send out an email blast reminding students to vote, they send them to our resource. And in many ways, I think the work we've done on our campus, not just with our website, but with our on the ground work has served as a template, a model for other campuses throughout the state, throughout the Big Ten, um, and even nationally. Our listeners cannot see, but I'm looking at Jessica Ronan here, uh, and you're about to uh, pitch it off to, to Jessica. Jessica, you, uh, would you share maybe some of what might be happening this year on Rutgers campuses? Sure, thank you. Um, so a little bit about what Are You Voting is planning for this upcoming fall. Are You Voting has really changed where it is an all semester, all year program. Um, so we've started a lot of the work in August um, by bringing on a team of interns and really building out our social media content and getting them very well trained. But what people can look for for this upcoming fall is voter registration drives and other in-person opportunities for people to be able to register to vote or successfully cast their vote. Um, in past years, we have really shifted our model in a way because we know that many students come onto campus already registered. It might not be the correct address or the address they would like to vote at, but they are coming on already registered. So we really have shifted our focus to getting students to actually participate in the political process and getting them to the polls. We do this through a variety of different ways. So in some senses, we're going to be holding vote by mail drives on campus for students. So students can receive an application, complete it, and we will submit it for them so they can receive a ballot in the mail. Additionally, we hold find your polling location tables. um, And we've created large scale maps for students who register on campus that they can find their accurate polling location so they can go and cast their vote on election day. 
In regards to just the voter registration process, as I mentioned before, we host drives in person, and we also have many resources that are virtual that students can participate in. So they can really register to vote or cast their vote in, uh, register to vote at any time. This has kind of cre- become a necessity from the pandemic, but really has transcended because we know that when students are coming onto campus, they're overwhelmed with many different facets. And in New Jersey, our voter registration period is within that first six weeks of classes. People are coming onto campus, they're trying to find their dining hall, they're trying to find the gym, their classes. Voter registration often, unfortunately, is not the first priority of what they're looking to do on a college campus. And with our registration deadline on October 18th, we really wanted to provide people opportunities to register whenever they want before that deadline. So we are going to be having TikTok videos and other multimedia that students can share across platforms and also that administrators can share with their students. So these are short 60 second videos or, you know, short graphics that they can read to help get them registered or help them find ways to cast their ballot. Lastly, and something that we did start during the pandemic was actually doing QR code lawn signs. So we have two sets of lawn signs out. The first one is for voter registration. So people can use this QR code and be directed to our ruckers.turbovote.org resource and they can register online. And secondly, we'll have a sign for casting their ballot, which will direct them to resources on our website. Uh, We created these because a few years ago in 2020, I was in Philadelphia and I was walking around and they were very popular for people to just have on their doorsteps. And they're great resources for people to go and get information. If they wanted to register, they could. So it's something that we brought to our campus. It's been really successful. And it also has allowed us to, you know, really broaden our reach and get to areas that we're not going to be on campus all the time, but it will give us an opportunity to really reach out to students in new and creative ways. Forgive me, Jessica, for not giving a little bit more information about you. Could you just share with our listeners a little bit about uh, your role at Eagleton and what you do specifically? Sure. So um, I'm the program manager at the Center for Youth Political Participation, a part of the Eagleton Institute of Politics. And in my role, I'm really doing a lot of the -the on-the-ground work of running our center um, through its various programs. So for the Are You Voting program, really leading a team of students and leading our content creation and our really on-the-ground work. Um, and also leading our discussions with other partners within the state, regionally and nationally. Uh, Additionally, I help and lead our Are You Ready program during the spring semester, where we go into area high schools and we provide civic education uh, initiatives for high school students with a team of undergraduate students. And lastly, I really, I run our Rutgers Eagleton Washington Internship Award Program, which is a $5,000 stipend that we give to students, outstanding Rutgers students to complete a nonprofit or government internship in Washington, D.C. during the summer. So I do a lot of different work, but it's all really connected to political participation and giving undergraduates the resources that they need to actually make a difference in their community, whether it's through voting, whether it's through civic education, or whether it's through just actually getting their feet wet and being a part of our democracy in an employment position. Well, that, that's really terrific. It sounds like you've got a busy year ahead of you. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me ask, so I, I'm a first year uh, student at Rutgers, maybe I've been a student for two or three years and maybe not so politically engaged, but I really want to be. Uh, Do I need to get onto Douglas campus to Eagleton to get involved? You mentioned a a number of websites. What's the easiest way for me uh, as a a newly active political student? I've heard of Eagleton. How do I actually make it happen? What do I, where, where should I go? Well, the first place I would get started is, is to follow us on social media at Rutgers CYPP. Uh, We have a very, as Elizabeth knows, we have a very active social media presence and we love to feature students. So I think the first way if you wanted to get involved in our work is to really reach out to us via social media. Uh, We're always looking for really creative students from all different walks of life uh, to really just begin their start. So that would be my first uh, first suggestion. My second suggestion is come and visit us at the the building. We want to be a resource to students. And I think Students often walk by and they never come into Eagleton because it feels so large and private, I would say. Uh, I was a student at Rutgers. Not once did I step into Eagleton as my four years at Rutgers, unfortunately. But now I go there all the time. So I think, you know, just making the first step, come into our building, ask us questions. We are a resource for you. We serve you. So um, those would be just like two ways that I would just get started. But it's never too late to get involved. Well, I appreciate that advice. I'm sure our listeners will as well. Uh, and you've given me a great reason to get on TikTok now. I've been looking for a reason 
but now I think I have one, an acceptable, socially acceptable reason for someone my age to get on TikTok. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, appreciate it. Uh, I, I want to <laughs> ask a serious question to Elizabeth and, and back to you, Jessica, as well. And I know you all have been involved in this for some time. Uh, can we anticipate in the midterm elections uh, and perhaps going forward, younger voters that 18 to 30 demographic, but certainly college age students, folks that we're seeing on a regular basis, can we expect them to turn out in, in larger numbers this time around? Or do you think it'll perhaps look more like other years? And I ask that because there's a, a great deal of talk about youth participation on the rise. And certainly both parties, I think it's fair to say, hope that younger people will turn out and vote for them. What have you seen anecdotally or statistically that suggests that we might or might not see greater political participation in, in this year's midterm elections? So Elizabeth, I'll throw it back to you. And then Jessica, you're, you're, uh, I'd love for you to jump back in as well. Certainly, um, I would say we have good reason to be very hopeful about youth political participation this fall. However, there are plenty of warning signs and red flags out there that we should keep an eye on, and in many ways that heighten the importance of not just students showing up, but all of us doing all we can to help students show up. So I would say, first of all, when I started at Eagleton, you know, there was tremendous concern about youth voting rates and young adults, um, you know, whether it was apathy or disengagement. Um, and I think that's something that really has shifted as millennials have gotten older and Gen Z has entered the scene. You know, just generationally, we see real differences between millennials from, from maybe my generation, Gen X, um, and even real differences between millennials and Gen Z. With, you know, with every generation, we're seeing young adults more engaged, more um, motivated, passionate about participating in their communities. Millennials were very interested in solving problems in their communities, but saw politics as slow, cumbersome, frustrating, so tended to go in and just sort of volunteer, or engage in social philanthropy. Where Gen Z, we saw a real shift in that, yes, there was annoyance, <laughs> yes, there was frustration with government, but we're using the democratic processes as a way to affect change. I think one of the most obvious examples of that was March for Our Lives um, and the way in which young adults responded to gun control in particular. There was you know, tremendous concern about a problem that has really been uniquely felt by young adults, by, by my children, maybe your children, Dean, that age group where kids are growing up with lockdown drills and you know, concerned about violence in their classroom, so, but have turned to politics, have looked to their state legislatures, have looked to their members of Congress and wondering, you know, what are you doing about this issue that is facing us young adults and have turned out um, and that, you know, have started to translate that that frustration with political participation. Certainly, we've seen that in increased voter turnout rates. Um, 2020 saw record turnout among young adults. Now, to, here's the caveat, though. So much of, we're thrilled that voter turnout rates were high in 2020. So much of that though has to do with um, efforts that were taken to make voting easier. So in New Jersey mm -hmm. in 2020, we were thrilled to see that 18 to 29 year olds in New Jersey had the highest voter turnout in the whole country. That's great. That's something to be celebrated. A lot of that has to do with how we ran our election in 2020. In 2020, in New Jersey, every registered voter sent a ballot in the mail. They didn't have to fill out an application asking for that ballot. It came to them. And when we made the process more accessible, when we made the process easier, young adults turned out in record numbers. So, you know, it's really worth mentioning there are a lot of barriers. There are a lot of hurdles that uniquely affect young adults. So there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of interest. The question is, what are we doing at the state level? And every state is to, to, can determine their own set of voter registration and turnout uh, practices, you know, within some parameters. What are we doing to make the vote more accessible? I'll hand off to Jess. Yeah, I think Elizabeth add. makes many good points about elections being easier for young people to go and actually participate. But I also wanted to highlight two 
um, two other notes is that Gen Z is very focused on organizing. Just so just grassroots organizing, protesting, sharing their voices. And I do wonder whether that will transfer into our voter turnout rates as well, continuing moving forward. So they're very focused on just advocacy and organizing. And we have seen very large voter turnout rates. But then in 2021 here in New Jersey, our voter turnout rates were still low. So there was also that disconnect as well. And I think that kind of speaks to the, there's a lot of focus on national and regional issues, which are very important and very pressing. But also if students are at the state university of New Jersey, our state and local politics really make a very big difference on just our financial aid rates or other um, necessary things to actually support our university. So I'm hopeful that they can continue to make that connection that, you know, there's problems happening in my community and who is representing me can really make a difference on those issues. But we have to really continue to connect that to what's happening in our local community, in our state community, because it's wonderful to have high voter turnout rates in our midterms and our presidential years. But who's really representing you at the local and state level that can make even more of a difference for your family and your life. Well, well, thank you for that expansive and I think very well-conceived answer because so much of where we are now has to do with issues uh, that younger people are finding themselves inheriting, problems, dare I say, that they're inheriting that our previous generations have left to them. So this is, uh, this is vital. Uh, is it the gun safety issue? Are there other issues that are motivating younger voters now? The overturning of Roe uh, by the Dobbs decision? Is, is it climate change? Is there a particular issue or is it a bevy of issues that are driving the youth vote? I think it's a multitude of issues. And I think that really young people are really seeing how all issues are really connecting. Um, So a very multifaceted approach. I think it's what you mentioned. I think it's women's reproductive rights. I think it's climate change. I think it's gun control. I think it's also just like the economic security and inflation as well, which is really impacting young people, especially it's all of those issues and how they're all connected that's really driving young people to get organized and get political. But I'll pass it off to Elizabeth to um, share as well. Yeah, I would agree with Jessica. I think I think it's all of the above. And this is where maybe the pandemic uh, highlighted it. I think there's much, much greater awareness about the links between our everyday lives and the decisions made by people holding office, whether it's the local level, state level, or federal level. But the extent to which I think much greater understanding of how important it is to play a role in determining who is making those decisions at the local, state, and federal level. And do they represent you? Elizabeth Maddow and Jessica Ronan, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts about political participation and why it's so important. Uh, again, and thank you listeners for joining us for this moment in democracy. Be well. The Eagleton Institute of Politics is a nonpartisan research unit of Rutgers University. This moment in democracy was made possible in part by the generosity of Eagleton supporters. To support our work, click the link in the description. Learn more about the Institute by visiting eagleton.rutgers.edu, signing up for our emails, and following us on social media.